My doctor prescribed me 5 mg finasteride after a brief discussion about balding and told me to take half, but he said that he will double check the dose later, which he did not. I thought 1 mg was the correct dose for male pattern baldness, but if I cut it in half, uh, it is still 2.5 mg, which is more than double of 1 mg. Am I missing something here? Should I cut it into fourths or something? That seems pretty hard given how small the pill is already. This video is brought to you by GoFiber Hair Building Fibers. Pick up your free sample and get instant hair confidence. Start your transformation today. Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel, guys, where we are going to be taking a look at whether it makes sense to take 2.5 milligrams of finasteride for preventing your hair loss. Pretty much any dose which is higher than the standardized one milligram of finasteride per day. Let's take a look at some studies which um, have been observing the efficacy and safety profile of concentrations of finasteride, not only one milligram, but concentrations higher than that, especially five milligram. If there is any difference in terms of, you know, efficacy or a side effect profile. So I would like to start with this study, or this is pretty much like a paper which summarizes also several studies, as you can see here, <clears throat> studies done on androgenetic alopecia using 5AR inhibitors. And this one, in the, this one is from 1999, and it's comparing the uh, dihydrotestosterone reduction in the plasma and on, in the scalp uh, with using one milligram versus five milligram finasteride. DHT levels were decreased by 64% with one milligram finasteride and 69% uh, with five milligram finasteride after 42 days. Okay, so as far as the scalp DHT reduction, you're not going to get any significant benefits if you're taking any dose which is higher than one milligram. As you see here, 64% is already as good as it can get with finasteride as far as uh, scalp DHT reduction uh, over time. Obviously, if you take finasteride for a week, uh, the scalp uh, DHT reduction will be probably somewhere around 40 to 50%. It won't be as high. Uh, uh, but over time, uh, as finasteride accumulates in the scalp tissue, in the target tissues, uh, the DHT reduction in these tissues will also reach higher um, levels uh, than 50%. Is it worth, you know, uh, taking five times the dose and getting, you know, 5% more DHT reduction in the scalp? I don't think so. And with 2.5 milligram of finasteride, it will be probably somewhere between 64 and 69%. Okay, so it's not really worth it. As as far as serum DHT levels, uh, they decreased 71% uh, and 72% uh, with one milligram versus five milligram oral finasteride. So as far as uh, serum DHT levels, uh, five milligram oral finasteride will not uh, decrease your DHT in your plasma way more than the one milligram tablet. So obviously even 2.5 milligram finasteride, if you dose it every day, it's probably going to reduce your DHT levels in about 70% as well okay now there's one thing that is uh, probably going to be different as far as uh, accumulating accumulation of the residues of finasteride in your system because obviously if you are going to be dosing 2.5 milligram of finasteride every day over time there is going to be more of that finasteride accumulated in your system so that just means that you probably can take more time off of that drug. Let's say maybe after a couple months, you can take more time off and then resume the treatment again, because there's going to be a lot of finasteride accumulated in your system, uh, as opposed to somebody who, have, who has been dosing one milligram of finasteride for a while. This guy will probably, you know, his system will get rid of that one milligram uh, finasteride dosed over time, it will get rid of it faster. Uh, because we know that finasteride has a half-life of uh, five to six hours. And usually that's why there is the standardized dose of one milligram of finasteride every day, because after 24 hours, uh, usually you end up with very, very little finasteride in your system. It's gonna be pretty much excluded uh, in about 24 hours. I mean, if you take finasteride at 6 a.m. in the morning, the next day, 6 a.m., you will end up with less than 
5% of that finasteride in your system. However, if you take 2.5 milligram today at 6 a.m., tomorrow at 6 a.m., you will end up with more of that finasteride residue in your system and thus, over time, these residues uh, will accumulate and you will be able to potentially you know take more time off of that drug after several months of taking it regularly compared to some guy who has been dosing one milligram all only so now that we know that the dht suppression be it in a plasma or be it in your scalp in the target target tissues is going to be very very similar between one milligram of finasteride or five milligram of finasteride so very very likely even if you take 2.5 milligram of finasteride the efficacy will be very similar to either one of one milligram of finasteride or five milligram of finasteride okay it's pretty much the same now the question is like why would you take more of finasteride if you can take less and get the same efficacy uh, the only thing when it would make sense to take 2.5 milligram finasteride or more for treating your hair loss would be if surprisingly higher dose of finasteride would cause less side effects or le le would be less likely to cause side effects which of course doesn't make any sense by looking at studies um, uh, comparing one milligram and five milligram finasteride there is actually not a big difference in terms of men experiencing like decreased libido experiencing ejaculatory disorders experiencing impotence in fact surprisingly in the one milligram finasteride group oral per day the occurrence of side effects was just a little little bit higher especially the decreased libido was six percent versus 4.7 percent in the four in the five milligram finasteride group so that's very surprising and it was a decent study done on 895 men which also included the placebo group so i consider this to be a pretty good quality study and also in the next study by roberts uh, we can see a comparison of five milligram one milligram and 0 0.2 0 0.01 milligram finasteride even between men uh, from 18 to 36 year old and we can see that uh, the side effect incidence was uh, also very similar between one milligram and five milligram finasteride group obviously uh, is actually again very mixed uh, we see erectile dysfunction being higher in the one milligram group and um, then uh, lowered in the five milligram group and we see uh, that decreased libido is higher in the five milligram group 2.7 percent and 1.7 percent in the oral uh, one milligram uh, group there's literally no reason for me to even experiment with higher dose and and really i know guys who experimented or accidentally uh, you know took five milligram of finasteride instead of uh, you know quartering that in uh, in 1.5 milligrams a piece and they got side effects you know or uh, accidentally applied way too much topical hydroalcoholic solution of finasteride uh, which was an equivalent of like 15 or 20 milligram of finasteride at once and they got crazy side effects they couldn't fall asleep they got like brain fog and stuff like that and it took took a while for these sides to go away i obviously also took topical finasteride which was an equivalent of 25 milligrams but it was uh, not a hydroalcoholic but liposomal solution and I didn't have any issues with it because it's a different formulation I've been on oral finasteride every day since the last 14 15 months now I'm taking it only every other day because I also added topical dutasteride uh, so I pretty much uh, don't think I need to take it every day and I also discussed it with uh, some hair transplant doctors who are themselves taking finasteride and they also told me that they like to also cycle on and off or you know go on a you know plan which doesn't involve everyday dosing but maybe every other day uh, you know and that's what I'm doing uh, also because I think that makes sense the most sense from uh, my perspective and I just wanted to share it with you obviously no not a medical advice if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and like this video and if you want to support me you can also check out my website Matt Thumbin and Scone where you can get several of my high quality hair transplant related guides.
on how to find the right hair transplant doctor, best hair transplant clinics in Turkey, different like uh, frequently asked questions about hair transplants, best hair transplant doctor collection, etc., etc. Uh, you can uh, definitely get on a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me as well, when, where I can help you out directly throughout your hair transplant research with finding the right doctor, clear some misconceptions around hair loss treatments, hair loss management, and so on. And lastly, you can also check out my free Facebook group, Hair Transplant Experiences, with over 2,700 hundred members in the group it's for free so enjoy make sure you join us and with that being said uh, thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in another video take care do you want to have less stress and more success with your hair transplant like many of my clients before you already then make sure you apply for this one single call one single call very important call which can help you minimize all the possible mistakes you could do throughout your hair transplant research a call with an expert in this field which can help you maximize the chance of you ending up with a successful hair transplant if you like that make sure you swipe up right now and get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me